Alright guys, welcome back to another scripting tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys about image labels and image buttons. Okay, now these are pretty simple, I'm not going to lie. Um, image labels are just, you know, images that you can display, and then image buttons are just images you, you can press, right? Pretty simple stuff. It's pretty much like a text button, but with an image on it, and a few other things. Anyways, let's go ahead and start the tutorial and show you how to use both of these things. Um, yeah. Anyways, but the next few the next few tutorials are gonna be pretty quick, I think. So uh, yeah, these GUI tutorials are pretty simple, so you can probably get through them all in like an hour if they're all uploaded, like you know when you're watching them. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can learn all GUIs in like an hour. So yeah. Anyways, um, okay. So what we're gonna do in this video is you know obviously the image labels. So we'll start off with that. So we have image labels. Okay. Now what exactly is an image label? It's basically just in. Uh, it's like a text label. But it's an image, so it's just an image. It's all it is. It's how you upload images to your game, okay? And uh, you have a few properties like the background transparency, which is um, you know obviously the background transparency. You set that to one. Um, it'll be invisible. But let me actually enter an image first before I do any of that. Um, but yeah, okay. First things first as well. Um, if you want to insert an image, you have to first upload it to Roblox. Now, how do you do that? Well, you have a couple options, okay? You can either go to your create section of Roblox and literally go to like my creations and then like um, decals, and then you could actually upload it like there, like like here, like um, uh, let me get it. Okay, like as you can see here, right? And I don't want to show my all stuff, but. Okay, as you can see here, I can literally go here and hit browse, and then actually upload the decal right here. Um, so yeah, and then you'd find it right here, and then you click on it, and then you copy that little code right there, right? And then you just paste it right in here. And that's for a game I'm making, so yeah, <laughs> that's one of like the icons. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so yeah. Uh, that's that. Okay, actually, I guess I'll use this image for now. Um, but uh, there's actually a way you can upload it a little bit easier. If you actually have your game published to Roblox, so we'll go ahead and publish it real quick. We'll do file publish. I want a blank base plate, so we publish it, publish. There we go. I don't need to worry about any of that stuff. I just need to have it on Roblox. And if you actually go there and you hit right here, and now, okay, so now that it gets published, if you go into your image and then click on it, there's like a little drop down in which basically says add image. And if you press that, you can actually choose a file right from your computer. And you don't have to go to like the Roblox thing and then upload it and then, you know, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to go through every single step in uploading it and then finding it and then taking it. You just go right here, you hit choose file and this is for this is some GUI for that. Um, but then for example, let's say I wanted to upload this rounded rectangle, right? Because they look nice. Um, I kind of put around the rectangle 34, I'll call it black rectangle or black rounded rectangle and there you go hit create and what's gonna happen now is I have this rectangle now it looks a little weird but let me go ahead and show you why so basically as you can see here I have this rectangle okay and if I were to go ahead and go like this and scale it out as you can see it's looking a little bit better um, but it's still a little fuzzy on the edges now the reason why is because how this was made wasn't supposed to be that big so when you start scaling stuff out like that it's gonna look fuzzy on the edges. Also, um, if you're wondering why um, it, there's white around it, that you need to set your, your background transparency to one, and that's gonna get rid of that white stuff. And now it's a rounded rectangle, but it still looks pretty weird. So let me go ahead and scale it down like how it's supposed to be, and now it looks a little bit better. Now it's not the best rounded rectangle ever. Like the person who made this didn't do that great of a job, but it's fine. You know, it's. it's I mean, <laughs> no, nah, I mean it, it's fine. It, it's fine, but. Um, but yeah, that's a rounded rectangle. Now I have a rounded rectangle, and now I can use it for whatever I want. It's pretty cool um, because people like round stuff. Like it really does well, I think, um, with GUIs. People like that a lot. So um, yeah. Anyways, you can also change like you have borders on your um, on your um, thing right here. I don't think I've ever used this in my life before. Um, I honestly don't know how it works. I never used it, but <laughs> if I have an image, I normally need to make the image, and then it looks good, and that's how I want it, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, apparently you have you have borders. I think that's, that's yeah, that's part of that. Yeah, so I don't think anyone would ever use that ever. So I mean, unless you want to, I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's part of the background. So if your background's hidden, and so will the border. Okay. Um, next, you have. Oh, also, I never explained active before, but I'll explain that when I do the image button. 
Okay, so next I have, let's see, what do I have? Okay, um, let's go over the image three colors. So this is basically how you change the color of your object. And if it's black, as you can see, you can only change it to so many colors because it's like, it's changing the color of the color. So like, what that means is that it's changing the hue pretty much. Now, like I said, you can only get so many colors because you have a, just a black thing by default. But if I were to make this and import it as white, which we should have, and like I said, the person who made the GUI wasn't really doing the best job, but it's fine. Um, then I could change it to any color I wanted to, and I wouldn't have to insert a, the same rectangle for every single time I wanted a new color rectangle. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, but I'll keep it as default, which is going to be the 255, 255, 255. And also, if you guys don't know what 255 means, um, when you make colors in computers at all, uh, it's going to be an RGB color. Well, most of them, I think. Um, but yeah, I think there's like some other stuff like H, yeah, HSV, which basically is like the hue, saturation, and value. But for the most part, if you're making a color, it's using RGB values, and basically they go up to 255. So it basically mixes red, green, and blue, and it out of the values 255. So you're just mixing the colors together. That's what you're doing. And as you can see, as I change this, it's selecting new colors because every mix of red, green, and blue is a different shade of a color, right? So if I put less blue and I less uh, red and I put just green and blue, it's gonna give me that color right there. If I do, you know, just fully green, 255 green, so if I change that to zero, as you can see, it's gonna make that green, right? That's just straight green. And, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing with red, 255 red, it's gonna give that red right there, right? As you can see, and these are all very, not like that looks nice. I like the color, <laughs> um, but these are all like just the the absolute values of these um, shades, obviously, because it's just a max. So it goes up from zero to two five five whenever you're mixing the colors. Um, if you guys didn't know that, that's what that means. So yeah, and uh, obviously, if you put um, if you mix you know red green and red green and blue all the way, and you do it all the way to two five five, it's gonna give you just straight white. And then if you do zero 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 it's going to give you straight black, right? So that's what that does. So by default, it puts it on 255, which is like the image color, and then it gives it its default color that it was imported in, or how it should look. So, yeah. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and see what else we have. We have other things like, oh, scale type. Now, um, scale type, that's probably why it looks so bad, but because um, it's on stretch right now, it's trying to fill up the whole entire... Well, okay, when it's on scale type, okay, so the, the scale type stretch... Um, basically makes it so if you scale it out, it's going to stretch out with it, right? It's, it's trying to copy the size of our image label. But if I were to set that to something like crop, now it's cropping and it looks really weird. So don't use that one for this, obviously. But um, if I already use fit, it's going to insert it as it would. And um, it's just fitting. Even if it's small, it's just trying to fit like it should, like fit how it was made. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes too much sense, but yeah. Um, oh, don't use slice. Gosh, what the heck. Uh, anyways, but fit, you know what I'm saying? It, it gets the image, and then it inserts it, and then it tries to make it fit in there without losing proportion in any way, right? It stays proportionate. Not it, it doesn't try to like fill up to the image label, as you can see. like It stays proportionate, and it stays how it should look. Um, and that's how it that's how it looked. That's that's how it was made. And this is like the organic thing right here. This is my rectangle. But obviously, maybe I wanted it to be able to stretch. Um, and you know, and then you can set it to stretch. And by default, that's what it's at. But it might not look the best. That's why it looks a little like faded around the edges, um, as you can see there. But yeah, uh, that's what that is. Also, you have things like uh, tile, which I I really never use these ever in my life. You can use them if you want. I don't. Um, maybe you will. I don't know. But basically, what it does is it's like a tile, so you can change the scale to 0.5 on the um, on the X, and that's gonna make it so there's two, right? And they're merging slightly. But then you change this to 0.5. Um, sorry, 0.5 on the Y, and now it's making four. And now, like I said, I I've literally never used these in my life. Maybe you will. I don't know, but um, as you can see, it made 16 right here now, and they're they're like all merging together, which looks pretty weird. Um, but that's how it works, I guess. I don't know. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's how you use tile. Like I said, I don't use them. You might, I don't know. I'm not gonna go into depth on them because I don't use them at all. So yeah. Um, and then that's pretty much that. Uh, obviously, you have image transparency, so you can set your image to look a little more transparent. That's pretty cool. Um, that way, you know, you don't have to stick with just a default one. Or if you wanted to change it inside Studio, you could do that. You don't have to export and re-import. That's pretty useful. Um, and then that's pretty much that. Those are all the properties of image labels, how they work, and um, pretty much that. There's not many um, events, or sorry, not events. Uh, like there's yeah there's not many um, properties or events that you want to change in a script. Normally, if you have an image label, you just keep it how it is, right? You don't really um, change stuff. But there is stuff like obviously inserted um, from the um, sorry. There obviously is stuff inserted from uh, the or inherited from the GUI object. So you have things like um, you know checking to see if your mouse is hovering over it or whatever. Right, or your mouse is, um, yeah, right. Well, at least you should. Okay, so uh, one thing I will show you though is local image labels equal to script dot parent. And I'm gonna do image label dot. Yeah, you can see you have events like mouse entered and all that stuff because that's in every single GUI object. Um, but the few things you do have is you can change the um, obviously all the properties right here. You can change all those things. And then you can change the um, image color. That's the one you might use. Um, that's definitely one you actually use in a script. And then you can change um, things like the image itself. That's very useful, obviously. If you want to just load in the images or change the image, you can do that. Um, so you can just do dot image, and then you'd paste in your, um, you know, that thing right there. Or normally you'd paste in your RBXDM asset ID and then the code of it. Um, but yeah. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that. So that's how you do that. I'm not going to go into scripts with that, but now let me go ahead and show you the image button. Now, there's not any difference with the image button, so it shouldn't take too much long to explain, but we're going to go ahead and enter the image button real quick. And there we go. All right. Now that we've got an image button right here, what we're going to go ahead and do is insert another frame. Okay, for this demo, I'm going to make like a little inventory type thing. Okay, it's not the best inventory ever, but... Um, or actually, I'll make it a shop, right? Let's, let's say, pretend this is a shop, okay? Shop. I'm gonna rename the shop frame. I'm gonna rename this to open shop. There we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and insert my image that I had earlier, um, which was the file. Oh wait, no, 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 no. This file right here. Okay, I'm gonna insert this one. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, there we go. And now I'll put. Oh wait, no, that's not. Okay, I'm just gonna paste it there. My bad. Okay, there we go. Now I pasted, because I have the code, I pasted it there, and I already had it uploaded. Um, so yeah. And then I can go to the background transparency to one, and now I have this cool little, this actually, that's like a dance button, but you know what, pretend this, pretend this looks like a shop, okay? Pretend this is like a shop button. Um, but wait, do I have any? There's a shop button. Okay, I'll use the real shop button. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't wanna, you know, leak my gem, I'm kidding. Um, there we go. That's a shop button. Okay, so now I'm going to make this invisible. So I'll just check the visible set to the false, right? Obviously. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert a script into our screen GUI because our local script. Oh, that's not, not that. That's localization table. That's not really for what we need. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, define our screen GUI. Actually, I'll just define the. Oh, I'll, I'll define both. All right, so local screen GUI is equal to script up here and then I'm gonna do local shop frame is equal to um, screen GUI dot shop frame and then I'm gonna do local open shop is equal to screen screen GUI dot open shop and now I'm gonna do open shop and then there's properties of it or events obviously um, and then there's an event which you know you guys probably will want to use which is activated or um, mouse button one up so we'll do mouse button one up connect function and then we'll do it and do um, shop frame dot visible is equal to shop not shop frame dot visible okay so let me explain this real quick alright so this is basically saying okay if the open shop button is pressed then op then run this event right here so if button 
is pressed this event runs okay that's what that is and this is just defining the variables obviously um, and then what I'm doing right here so I'm, I'm basically this is how you this is how you make it like you'll learn this whenever you use GUIs well you are learning right now um, but basically this is how you make it so it's not equal to what it's equal to right now so basically for example okay if we press this button right here okay and it's not open okay um, that means that or the shops invisible right that means visible is equal to false so what we're going to do is we're going to do okay shop frame dot visible is equal to not shop frame dot visible so it's giving us the opposite it's giving what is what it not what it's not okay so it's equal it's equal to what it's not so that for for boolean values it's very useful to do that so you don't have to do like that way you don't have to type out you know if shop frame dot visible is equal to true then shop frame dot visible is equal to false and then you know then you could do an else statement and then if it's if shop invisible is equal to false well then you can do shop invisible is equal to true but see i just i had to type five lines of code there and for this is only one right but this this is the same thing these are equivalent um so yeah i'm just gonna delete that for now but okay anyways now let me go ahead and hit play and let's this should work okay and boom, now we have a little inventory. Obviously, it's not an inventory, but <laughs> let's pretend that it is. And as you can see there, we have an inventory. Um, but yeah, I like that. It looks, it's um, very simple, obviously. I did that in a very short amount of time. So it's that, it's that simple. That's how you use image buttons, stuff like that. Uh, one more quick thing I want to show you about image buttons is uh, hover images, which um, if you guys don't understand what that is, basically it's just um, whenever you hover over it, it's going to display a different image. So sometimes you can do very cool things with that. Um, Maybe I, um, here, wait, let me get my, uh, I'm going to, okay, so whenever I hover over it, I'm going to make it the dance button, all right? So now if I hover over it, it turns to the dance button. Now, obviously, that's not practical. You may not want to actually do that. But for example, sometimes people like to add like a little, um, like expands a little bit, you know, like an expanded button. That looks cool sometimes. I don't know, but it, hover images are cool sometimes, trust me. Or maybe you want to make it green, right, like, like it's selecting or something like that. Um, like change the color of it to green. I don't know, but those hover images, they can be cool to use. It, and now, obviously, it's the same button. It does the same thing, but just the image changed. Okay. Um, one more quick event I want to explain real quick, too, is active or property. Um, this is actually in pretty much every GUI element, or it should be. Um, but basically, active, what it means, as you can see right here, it actually says, if true, this GUI object can fire mouse events and will pass them to GUI objects layered underneath, Will while false will do neither. So basically, what that's saying is, um, whenever this is checked, um, you can actually um, fire events like that. So if this is unchecked, this event won't even fire right like it's not an active GUI right that's what it means so if it's not active then this event's not gonna fire at all so make sure if you're using if you had a game it's active it, it'll still be visible you can still see it but it just it won't be looking or listening to events right so yeah all right anyways that's pretty much it this tutorial actually was kind of longer than I expected but I think I went pretty in depth and I think I explained it pretty good so I hope you guys saw the same thing and um, yeah that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one peace